put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Disney's Action Game with Hercules video game review. PlayStation Edition, though I don't think it actually really matters. Well, the plot. Going by this game, Hades has to stop Hercules, who we don't really know anything about. Hercules trains with a satyr who is never named, rescues Meg, and yeah, that's about as much as I should really give away for those who don't know the story of these. But yeah, this does a pretty bad job of conveying the story of the film to those who haven't already seen it, or who might, you know, have a little trouble remembering, or whatever. I realize that it is, of course, a licensed game, excuse me, and it is meant to be played soon after watching the movie, but even so, it should be able to stand on its own and tell the actual story. You know, comparisons to Aladdin are well, a good tool to help explain why this sucks as much as it does. Because this is one of the Disney games, the licensed Disney games, which do suck. And the licensed games in general, which do suck, as they tend to do. But yes, Aladdin doesn't tell the entire story of the film, the animated film. But it tells much of it, as much of it as it can really get away with, and if you have no idea what the story of the film is, you'll still enjoy a story in the game. You know, heck, the Aladdin game doesn't even include the, you know, major part of the film of Aladdin pretending to be Prince Ali, you know, that, that ought to give you an idea of, you know, the magnitude of what had to be cut. Because, you know, how are you going to do action with, you know, Prince Ali, that whole, yeah. Anyway, this game is in part a victim of what it is a licensed game of. I, th I should maybe start with the positives. It can be fun, and the programming is essentially good much of the time. I suppose that's actually about it. Well, I, I guess some are going to enjoy that it, you know, it uses the music and the imagery of the film, which, you know, those, those are definitely positive aspects in a licensed game. Although the, you know, you, you could have done without... They, they bring in the voice actors, or at least, you know, I have the Danish edition, so I don't know if they actually did this for the American one, but I suspect they did. They bring in, the, they brought in the voice actors, had them record a couple of new lines, and they are repeated ad nauseum. It's especially true of, I, I don't remember Danny DeVito's character, but yeah aforementioned unnamed satyr character, the trainer. He constantly yells these meaningless lines that are supposed to be like bits of advice. And, you know, I, I can understand why they did it, but if they weren't going to record more than they did, you just end up with, yeah, really repetitious not that funny in the first place lines, you know. But yes, the imagery is used, although it doesn't quite work as well, I guess. It's... 
how to how, how best to explain it as it did in Aladdin. You know, and this for some reason Hermes means a save checkpoint. Yeah, and you collect vases, bosses, in order to you know, th this is this is one of those games that are based on a password system. Except it's also based on a system which allows you to save your progress. Yeah, I I guess they just couldn't decide on one of them. I, I, I'm not sure I've come across any other game which has both of these systems. Usually you get just the one. But anyway, if you collect all four vases, you will get the password because each vase is, you know, it's, it, yeah, it, there are symbols and it's these four and in the, you know, correct order. And it's these specific four. So, you know, it's going to take you time if you're going to try to crack these, com you know, these passwords by yourself. So, yeah. And if you collect all four, not only will you, you know, have the password and you'll be able to write it down, which, <laughs> good luck with that, because the symbols are so vague, some of them you might mistake for others of them, and, you know, I don't recommend writing down, like, a word or a few words to describe the symbol, because you might later be like, wait, what, what does that mean? And is this, is that this one, or is it this other one? You know, so maybe you should try drawing it, but then again, that also might lead you to confuse some for the same one. So yeah, like I said, good luck with that. But, I believe it's also when you collect all four vases, which you of course have to look for, it's not just that, you know, you complete the level and then you get the password for the next level, because that would be too easy. No, you, yeah, you have to collect all four, and I believe that also means that you can save your progress, you know. And, yeah, you know, that's actually, that's how they try to keep you playing this game, because if you just play it through and you don't mess up too much, less than two and a half hours of playing time, you know, and that's not a huge difference from Aladdin, but Aladdin is, what's that? It's, it's fun to play, that's what it is, and this one, yeah. I should probably finish off the collectibles first. You also gather the letters of Hercules' name, you know, as in a couple of the other of these games, such as, I think it's called A Bug's Life in English, that, yeah, the, the one with the ants and the... I don't know, I didn't watch the movie. I only played the game, and in that one you could actually pretty much follow the story. But anyway, back to this game. Yes, you collect all the letters of the name Hercules. And I don't remember what that actually does if you collect all of them, but what these letters tend to be useful for actually is as an indicator of two, two different things. One is how many letters you've already missed when you found, excuse me, this one, because it'll show you the entire, excuse me, it'll show you the entire word and highlight the letter you just found. So you'll be like, ah, oh, I missed several, and you can't go back. So you'd have to replay the level, and if you didn't get the vases before, you might have to start at an earlier level, maybe even starting all over, and are you seeing how this game tries to steal your time? And <laughs> don't let it, because just remind yourself, I'm not enjoying myself playing this game. Anyway, the other thing it indicates is how close you are to the end of the level, which I am quite grateful for. Because, yeah, so, some of them just feel like going, like, like they go on forever, especially that second to last one. 
Yeah. Interestingly enough though, the very last level, which is entirely a boss fight, is the easiest boss fight and easiest level in the entire game. Easier than the first level, easier than the first boss fight. So, yeah. Which, actually, the first boss fight, until you get the hang of it, you're gonna lose a bunch of lives on it, which is just... Yeah. Now, and when you do reach the end of level, Hercules will grab this drink thingy and squeeze it and a bunch of white liquid will spray in, into his mouth. I hope to Zeus that that's some, that, that sports drink that they were, you know, pushing in the movie. Anyway, the game is essentially a action platformer with jumping puzzles and, you know, just maneuvering maneuvering your way through the various levels. I believe there's like eight levels total and yeah, like I said, very very short game. You spend a couple of levels training with the Satyr, you know, following a cutscene that only establishes that Hades is the bad guy and that he wants to take Hercules out. It doesn't actually go into any of the stuff that we see him do in the movie in order to actually take Hercules out, you know, or, you know, the meeting between the... But, yeah, you know, they are adapting this film which doesn't really have much that you could turn into action before the training starts, you know. The training montage gets turned into two levels which references the montage over and over. You know, you've got the mock, the, the dummies that he has to rescue by jumping through hoops of fire and, you know, sharks, you know, jumping across water, all that stuff that you see in the montage, yeah. Then uh, you go to, you go through the centaur forest, which is, of course, you know, there are plenty of centaurs in it, instead of just the one. And then, you know, you rescue Meg from the centaur, then you go to Thebes, and then it takes a bit of a jump... No, wait, then you fight a couple of boss enemies, you know, as in the movie. You get to fight the Hydra, which is actually a not entirely horrible fight. And you get to fight Medusa, which is about the same, you know, also not, a, not, not an entirely horrible fight. Now... I s suppose I should get into what is very much wrong with it. I, I can start with the just maneuvering Herc around. Herc handles like a mech. He feels heavy when you're running around with him. I get that he's like, ooh, carrying, you know, all this muscle and he's like godlike, you know, he's a demigod, so you know, you want to feel the weight of that, but what it ends up feeling, what it ends up, yeah, it, like a mech, you know, it's like you're just slowly droning around with this massive weight, and your enemies do not have that problem. Your enemies move faster than you, recover quicker than you, they tend to outrange you with their attacks, and yeah, there, and and several of them will come at you sometimes, so that you literally have no chance of, you know, taking them out. Maybe they'll, you know, crowd you and just come at you from both sides, and yeah, you'll have absolutely no chance. Your attacks, you have this charged up fist move, which is really only good for breaking you know, these barriers that are in your way. So really, it's just, you know, move up to it, hold down, you know, the key for a while, the triangle key, and release it. And that's it, you know. A couple of times you're being, you know, attacked while doing that, so you might have to move around a bit. That's actually incredibly frustrating when you're being attacked while you have to do other stuff, partially because he moves so slowly. 
So, you know, you're liable to get hit, actually. You also have these, I guess, like, boxing moves. I, they have zero range, and there's almost no use for them whatsoever. Because your enemies will, you know... It's, it's not efficient to have these, you know, swift, you know, punches. Actually, when I say punches, it's like the first one he delivers with, you know, whatever fist. You know, it depends on which way you're facing. But say you start punching with the right fist. The move he's going to do with the left fist is actually more like lazily reaching for something that's kind of out of reach and then giving up. And then he goes back to d delivering an actual punch, you know. So, I don't know. I guess he just gave up halfway. You can, of course, jump and... In jumping, you can also, I don't know, direct a lot of force towards your feet. And, you know, if you see marks on the ground that look like, you know, it's already partially broken, you can break it by doing, you know, by jumping and pressing the down key, you know, and, yeah, doing this move a couple of times and it'll lead you to a hidden, lead you to a hidden area which might have one of those pricey letters or, you know, some stuff. And then you can swipe with your sword, and you can do this both while standing and while jumping. Which, unfortunately, does not mean that you won't get constantly hit whilst trying to attack other enemies at times. One of the enemies... I should probably say that Part of the problem with the enemies is not only are there enemies that you actually can't defeat, because especially in Thebes, there are enemies, or there's stuff that'll hurt you that isn't really an enemy. Like the Doomsday guy you see in the movie with the, you know, he's wearing like a column. I don't get the joke. And this cat, which is struck by lightning and then runs off in fire. Well, you know, I'm not sure you really see that in the film, but they like mention it and you see the cat has been hit by lightning. Something like that. In the game, those two hurt you. It's practically impossible to outrun them and you can't stop them. So I guess you, your best bet is really to just try to avoid the, you know, the, the cat when you see it. Yeah, that'd be much easier if it didn't look exactly go like all the goat kids running around as well. So, yeah, some of them are even in the exact same color, so you can't, like, really quickly decide. You know, a lot of, a lot of stuff in this game really shows that this is very rushed and that, yeah, licensed video game, you know, tend to be rushed. By itself, it might make sense for it to be in the game, but when you put all these elements together as a whole, it's muddled and, yeah, just not very good, you know. Also, at times, I, I'm not sure if I've already mentioned this, but yeah, sometimes you really can't tell if something's going to hurt you or not. And you might misjudge and think that something that will hurt you, you know, you might be trying to avoid that and rush into something that you really didn't think was going to hurt you, that you didn't even give it a second thought. This is obviously not going to hurt me. Why would it? And then suddenly it hurts you, you know, and you actually lose lives on account of that sometimes. It's also one of those delightful games where you can't complete the entire game on the easy difficulty setting, which always leaves me wondering, why did they include an easy difficulty setting then? You know, I get that you, you know, you don't want it to be too easy or whatever, but then why include that difficulty setting, you know? Anyway, so yeah, you have to be playing it at at least the medium difficulty setting, you know, the second of the three difficulty settings. One of the main enemies that you will encounter in this game is this... I don't even know what to call it. It's like a crow crafted from rock. 
Is this in the movie? I don't recall ever seeing it in the movie. Who sent it? Hades? Is it is it the sa the the satyr? In case you don't know what this satyr, it's the you know the, the, he's got the the sheep legs, you know. But otherwise, man. Anyway, did he send it? Because the first time it appears, it's actually in the training that he does. He doesn't comment on it. He's not like, oh, watch out those things. They're in Thebes. They're in almost all of the levels that you know could at all have them in them, you know, they're in like half the levels total, I think. And I have no idea where they come from, who they're following, if, what, what is, I could live with if these were just birds, if these were just birds of prey, you know, because those Klingons, you can't trust them, no, seriously, if they were like eagles or something, I guess they didn't want children thinking of attacking Especially bald eagles, because they, yeah, you know, I think they might get arrested for that. But whatever, you know, endangered animal and everything. But seriously, just for it to at least make sense, or for it to be something you see in the movie, like again the sharks, which do appear briefly in the training. The a couple of the other enemies are. I'd say most of the enemies are from the film, or at least half the enemies are from the film, you know, actually appear in the film. You don't get to fight Scar, though. It's, it's too bad, you know, it's the, one of the few Disney cameos in the film, and then, anyway. You also fight these, I guess, like, criminals in Thebes a couple of times, you know that, you know, run around and, you know, they'll, like, try to stab at you with knives and such. And one of them throws knives, and I just... I don't have a ranged attack, so that dude better not have a ranged attack. I'm sorry, that just... That... Ugh. Why doesn't he have a ranged attack? Anyway, I'm not sure I've played a single other one of these games, and I have played, like, four of them. Anyway, this is the only one that doesn't have a ranged attack. Aladdin, ranged attack. He's throwing apples. If he's throwing apples, could you not have thought of something for her to throw? You know, you've got Tarzan throwing poisonous berries or something, and you've got... I don't even know what the ant is throwing. Flick, I think that's his name. I don't know it because I've spelt it in the game. I've found those four letters. Much easier than finding... Anyway, however many are in Hercules. The level design isn't horrible, but there are a lot of places where you kind of get lost and where you're suddenly just, you know, wondering how, how am I even... Yeah, you know, you don't know which way to go. The boss fights vary a bit. I'd say one of the really big problems is that whenever you get hit in the game, you're stunned for a couple of seconds. Like, two seconds. Where you just... Well, I think it's two seconds where you can't get hit again, and at least one full second where you can't do anything yourself. So, actually it might be two, th two seconds for both of them. So basically, you can get hit over and over and keep getting stunned. You know, this was a problem with old game, older video games sometimes. But this is one of the last games I've actually experienced where it really happens. This and Medieval 2 are some of the only later games, you know, I'm thinking like old DOS games kind of had that problem, like early 90s, not late 90s video games had this kind of problem. So in this, literally one single mistake, one, even though you have full health, can cost you your life. Usually it won't be because you're constantly getting hurt, but it will be because you get hurt and then suddenly you fall to your death. This is especially true of the, you know, there, there's three types of level. well, four types of levels in this game. 
and one of them, you know, uh, there, there's the regular, which just, yeah, straight from the side kind of, you know, platforming, action platforming. And then there is this one where you're running, and basically you can only jump, move back towards the camera, and move forwards on the screen. And like, you know, regardless, and, and, you know, move side to side, obviously. Regardless of what you do, Herc is going to keep running, you know. Excuse me. Even when, you know, when you jump, you're going to jump, excuse me, kind of forward. And there's like three of these levels, I think. Yeah. And basically, you know, yeah. Several of these levels have these holes where you could die, or this thing that you could be continually running into if you, let's say you hit the middle of it, and you're gonna, you know, he gets hit and, you know, goes backwards a little bit. He doesn't go through it. That's what they should have done. They should have just let him pass through it once you've hit it once. But no, he just moves into it, then moves a little bit back. And if you're not really quick about moving him off to the side, he's going to run into that same thing several more times. Even if you do do it very quickly, you're almost definitely going to hit it three times, roughly. You know, two or three times. Almost impossible to avoid. And that brings me very nicely into one of the main problems with this game, the 3D. I don't mind 3D, and around this time, you know, it was becoming more prevalent in video games. You know, you had had some, like, early attempts at it with, you know, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, stuff like that, where it's not complete 3G, 3D, you know, you still basically, yeah. I'm not gonna go into those games, I think you know what I mean, if not, look them up. This is essentially a 2D game. And that would have been fine if it had just stayed like that. You know, Aladdin, fully 2D game. There is nothing 3D in Aladdin. This one implements this 3D every so often. So, for example, in the regular levels, you know, the, the levels I just talked about where you run are very much 3D, you know. And the big problem with the 3D is that you can't always move in three dimensions whilst the enemy sometimes very much can and they move much smoother in the 3D. And you cannot always tell if the enemy is close enough on that third axis that you could hit them or be hit by them. So you might be swinging your sword a bunch of times at an enemy you can't hit yet, and then, you know, because of the timing, because of when they move close enough to be hit by you, they hit you instead. And once again, you're, you might be trapped in this limbo of, you know, oh, her got hit, oh, he got hit again. And it just goes on like that. In the regular levels, you can sometimes move towards the camera or, you know, further ahead also, you know, and again, you sometimes have elements in the background or the foreground that maybe you can't properly see them, maybe you can't tell if they could hurt you or not, maybe you can't even affect them, but they can hurt you, all this really annoying stuff. Now, the last two types of levels. This one actually only gets one level, which is really too bad, because at least the the type of level it is, it could be the best level. Instead, it actually is, you know, well, it is one of the more fun levels, but it's also one of the more frustrating ones. You fly Pegasus. See, I, I just... That's really all I have to say in order for you to appreciate how much fun this is. It's a lot like flying the the magic carpet in Aladdin. Only, you know, that one was just pure actual fun. You know, even though that level actually, you know, 
That level in Aladdin has no checkpoint saves, so if you die, even if you're near the end, you have to start all over. That can get annoying, but it's still, on the whole, a very fun level. In this, yeah, it's this really annoying mix of being really frustrating, but at the same time, oh, oh, other times, quite fun. But yeah, you fly around as Pegasus, you know, using your sword and, you know, directing yourself up and down. And that brings me again nicely into another of the big problems with this, and that is that about half of what can hurt you, maybe more than half, you don't see until the very last moment, which pretty much means you're gonna get hurt by it. There's almost no way to avoid it. And basically, a lot of the time you're gonna die just because of these things, and you just have to remember where they are, figure out a strategy for next time, and then next time, you know, again, if you got the vases for the previous level, or you might have to go further back, or you, you might even have to restart the game if you didn't find enough vases, which you're not that likely to the first time, you know. So, yeah, you have this... It's just, it's downright infuriating. It's impossibly frustrating that just over and over in the game you're gonna get hurt and it's because the game doesn't play fair. It's because it throws something at you that you only see at the very last moment, you know. And it didn't need to be that way, and I gotta say, I don't think any game should be like that, you know. It's just, it's again, somewhat of a tendency that, again, was on the way out at this point in time. This game is from 97, same as the movie, so I don't understand why it would still have these things that I frankly think of as very early 90s stuff, you know. The... I should talk about, there are a couple of additional weapons, again, similar to, you know, some of the other... Well, yeah, actually, there is ranged attacks, it's just very limited. You can only attack with the, I don't know what they're supposed to be, powers of the gods or something. You can only attack from standing still. Not, not while moving, not while jumping. Only when standing still. And those only in the, you know, or you, you can on Pegasus as well, although in that case you can only do it in one direction. There is... Basically, invincibility, or at least, you know, invulnerability, which is, you know, all of these are, of course, quite temporary. But yeah, basically, you can get hit whilst wearing that, and you won't get hurt. You know, it, it'll pass right through you. It's, it's no clip, basically, the, that code. Then you have this lightning bolt, which you can control when you're not on Pegasus, and, again, standing still. And... You know, at, at, there are actually points where you cannot defeat enemies without it, or it's, you know, practically impossible to defeat them without it. So, make sure to pick it up and make sure to use it well. Then you have these really horribly programmed homing missile fireballs, and then there's this practically useless attack, which basically attacks in a circle around you, you know. I barely found ammo for it. I used it like once where it hit one enemy. You know, it's almost never going to. It just occurs to me, when I talked about the flying rock birds, I did not mention the most frustrating aspect of them which is that, like other enemies from games from this period of time, they have this, again, from before this period, from early 90s at the latest, 
they do this diagonal dive, which is practically impossible for you to A, dodge, and B, intercept and attack. You know, go ahead and try and jump towards it and then strike with the sword. You're almost definitely going to get hurt yourself. And again, sometimes they bunch up these and you might actually kill a couple of them with the same sword swing, but then get hit by the last one. You know. I suppose that more or less covers the game. But, yes, just a little more on the Hydra. You do indeed get to chop its heads off. And, yes, for a while. I, I have no idea how the ending is supposed to work of that fight. But for a while, when you chop one head off, it, two more spring out, which is pretty cool. And they, do, they get the blood color right as per the film. So... That's kind of cool. The big problem with that fight is that basically you have to wait for it to try to bite at you and then you chop one of its heads off. Some of the time you're going to be able to chop its head off even though it hits you, but a lot of the time you're not. And it's almost impossible to tell which angle it's going to come at you, when exactly it will. I haven't found a good way to defeat it. I just, you know, with a lot of the game, it's more luck than skill. You know, and that's just kind of how it has to be because, I mean, I've played this game a bunch of times and still just, yeah, you, you die from almost nothing at times and the, the actual answer to how you have to do something is quite unintuitive and sometimes there is just no good answer and you just have to keep trying until you just suddenly hit it out of blind luck. And that's what I'm going to end it on. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.